Chairman. Mr. Bernanke, I think, want to thank you for being here today. Um, I know that uh, we have had very difficult times, and certainly you and Mr. Paulson and, and others uh, we know have worked diligently uh, to try to uh, restore the financial security of the country. Um, there are divergent opinions, though, of the actions that, taken, that are taken and to how we should approach them. Um, I have voted against every bailout uh, that has come before this Congress. Um, and, and I've done that because I felt that the programs that were put before us were not clearly defined. Uh, the scope of the cost or expense was not clearly defined. Um, the ability to hold people accountable was, um, was difficult to, to ascertain um, in programs that were undefined. And I think that we're seeing now, as the American public looks at this, there's a lot of unintended consequences. There are things that are happening that the American people are saying, well, I didn't quite think that that's, that's what it's going to be. Um, I know you're facing a lot of questions today concerning Bank of America and, and Merrill Lynch, and they go right to the heart, I think, of questions concerning the federal government's proper role um, in, um, in private enterprise. Um, how do we step in appropriately? How do we not step in? You know, the, the federal government has, has very mixed performance when it comes to, to the issues of interfering or intervention in private enterprise. Frequently, this committee has hearings on issues as basic as our contracting processes with private enterprise. We're not a very good customer. Uh, many times issues arise where people wonder whether there's been uh, abuse of processes, conflicts of interest. So when you then put another layer of us just not being a customer, but us being an investor, uh, an, indi an indiv a entity that's providing a bailout, or even an owner, people have a great deal of concern. Um, yesterday, I introduced House Joint Resolution 57, the Preserving Capitalism in America Amendment. It is a proposed amendment to the United States Constitution. Uh, it came about as a result of my discussion with people back home because several people that I spoke to said that they did not believe that enough people were taking a stand to say, this is wrong. I, I don't believe that this should have happened in this manner. I know we have difficulty, uh, but I don't agree with this structure. I don't agree that we should own General Motors. Um, the constitutional amendment would limit the ability of the federal government to acquire an ownership interest in a private corporation. It does give the government the ability to issue loans. It also allows us to invest in public authorities, public use corporations, and also allows investments by government pension funds. Um, the, um, it turns out that as I was discussing this with people in my community, that, that limiting government ownership over private enterprise is not a new idea. We found that at least eight state constitutions have in some form limited the state's ability to acquire stock or equity in a company, apparently uh, as a result of the Panic of 1837, which you would know a whole lot more about than, than I do as a result of, of your, your great historical expertise. But a number of people have concerns as the Obama administration moves forward, as the bailouts in the fi financial sector move forward, as our domestic automobile industry uh, becomes uh, publicly owned. Um, the, um, the constitutional amendment that I dropped yesterday was dropped with 102 original co-sponsors. Nearly a quarter of the House stepped forward and said, I want to support a constitutional amendment because we don't think it can be done by statute that could say, um, we understand that there are times when action needs to be taken. Uh, we understand when intervention needs to occur. Um, but we do not believe that ownership is a structure that should be an available option. Um, we're very concerned about what happens next. For example, um, we have a huge ownership interest in General Motors. We don't in Ford. Um, let's say both of them bid on a government contract. What, what happens then? Um, do, can Ford be assured that they're going to have the equal treatment when the government's virtually bidding for its own, own contract? I'd like your thoughts on the amendment. And if that amendment was in place, um, I'd like your thoughts as to how you would have gone about and how um, TARP funds would have been used and some of these other things could have been structured in a way where we wouldn't have ended up with ownership, but you would have responded to our financial crisis. Well, I, I, excuse me, I agree with you that um, uh, limited government ownership, limited, limited gov government intervention in the private sector is frequently uh, a good policy. And uh, um, in that respect, uh, you know, I think that's, that's a very good approach. Um, I should say, though, that in order to make that a viable policy in our financial sector, we need to have a set of rules and regulations that can allow financial firms to fail. And I, I believe in failure. You know, failure 
Capitalism without failure is like religion without sin, somebody said. Um, you need to have failure, but you have to have failure in a way that's not going to bring down the entire system. So if you're going to do that, you need to also have uh, rules and regulations that allow the orderly wind down, the orderly failure of large financial firms. Um, before we conclude, Mr. Chairman, if you'd, if you'd allow me. So I, I don't believe you're saying, are you, that you think that the only way you could have intervened is, is to result in, in ownership, that there weren't structures of, of loans and, and other um, assistance that could have been provided that wouldn't have ended up in the federal government having an ownership interest. And then, of course, therefore, where we get this conflict of, of well, how is the government going to execute its ownership interest? I'd have to think about that, but if you look at banking crises in history, Japan and Sweden and the U.S. in the 30s and so on, frequently you do have a period of capital being injected by the government, which essentially is a temporary ownership. Um, usually those things are only temporary, but um, again, uh, I'm not sure what the alternative would be. I'd be happy to think about it, but in order to avoid ever having government ownership, again, you need to figure out a way to avoid having the crisis in the first place, and I think that should be the first priority. Well, I appreciate your thoughts, because sorry, people are obviously very concerned it. about this, and, and this looks like a, uh, a line that perhaps we should not be. be thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much. Yield to the gentleman.